Hello everyone, my name is Chris Hernandez, Emergency Management Specialist here at Snohomish Health District, and we're kicking off our video series on emergency preparedness. This video series is going to provide some insights and some ways that you can best prepare for an emergency. You can't always predict when an emergency will happen, but these tips may help you best lessen the burden that an emergency might cause. This video will cover key principles in food safety, shelf life, and storage of your food. During an emergency, the last thing that you want to worry about is a foodborne illness or other medical problems. So follow these tips to help you best prepare. Food is an essential part of any emergency preparedness kit. Understanding the shelf life and storage can help prevent illness during an emergency. The loss of power, water, or even getting access to food may occur during an emergency. Do you remember how difficult it was to find food during our latest snowstorm in February? Hopefully these interruptions won't occur for too long of a duration during an emergency, but it's recommended that you have at least two weeks worth of food for you and your family. Many foods have a shelf life and proper storage is needed to maximize it. Many refrigerated and frozen foods can become unsafe to eat if kept at improper temperatures. Bacteria likes to grow between 40 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Here are some tips to help maximize the shelf life in your refrigerator or freezer. Try to keep doors closed as much as possible. Food in your refrigerator can last in safe temperatures as long as four hours and in your freezer, if it is full, can last up to two days. Also, here are some tips for storing your food in your emergency kit. Keep canned and boxed food in a dry, cool place. Throw out canned foods that become swollen, dented, or corroded, and use food before its expiration date, but make sure to replace it with fresh supplies. Non-perishable food can be a great foundation for creating an emergency food supply. Canned, freeze-dried, or dry mixes are some of the best options. These non-perishable foods require very little or no cooking, water, or refrigeration to eat. Try to find foods that are non-perishable but have good nutritional value. We've got some great examples here to give you ideas on how to start your emergency food supply. Ready to eat canned meats like this tuna, fruits, vegetables, or even soup with a mix of everything. You could add protein or fruit bars, dry cereal or granola, dried fruit, canned juices, or even non-perishable pasteurized milk. Remember, freeze-dried is also a good option, like these, but you will require water for cooking. If you have food that requires water for cooking, make sure this is accounted for in your storage of emergency water. Aside from clean water to drink, it is important to remember you may need water for cooking and or sanitation. Water can be purchased and stored for emergencies in bottles or cans. Most people don't realize that bottled water has an expiration date too, so update your supplies as needed. And don't forget the can opener or eating utensils. Electric can openers may be popular for day-to-day -day use, but you'll want to make sure you have a manual can opener in case of emergency. Following some of these steps can help you as you're preparing for an emergency. While you're gathering your food supplies for your emergency kit, don't forget some comfort food. It can bring comfort to you and your family during times of stress. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time for some more emergency preparedness tips.